theoretical framework in our previous lectures we looked at um, what is found in a chapter two we looked at reasons why you should go in for literature review and all of that today we'll be taking the theoretical framework which is a part in the chapter two of every research report and we're also going to look at conceptual framework uh, in other subsequent lectures. But for this one, we are going to look at theoretical framework. So the theoretical framework elucidates the theory that underpins the research. For instance, in a study examining the impact of social media on mental health, the theoretical framework might draw upon theories of social influence and psychological well-being to explain the relationship between social media usage and mental health outcome. Over time, there have been lots of theories that have been established or developed by researchers. And these theories, like we know, is a guiding principle that says how things happen. So in research, especially in quantitative research, what you do is that your research, you are going to anchor it on a particular theory trying to test the, your, what you're researching against the existing theory, trying to test that theory. Most times, if you find out that your findings will still uh, align with the, the, what the theory says, and sometimes it can be contrary. So in quantitative research, we try to uh, see or try the, the existing theory. By that way, we anchor our research on the existing theories. Whereas in qualitative research, findings are used to develop what theories. So that's what we're going to look at. So why do we anchor our research on theories? Why do we have to anchor our research on theories? Theories are developed to explain phenomena establish connections between variables and make predictions. So theories help us to establish phenomena and also it helps us to establish a connection between variables and make predictions, okay? For example, in a study investigating the effect of exercise on stress level, the theory of stress reduction through physical activity might be used to explain how exercise influences stress level. Another example is maybe in the study of knowledge and attitude of pregnant women towards exclusive breastfeeding, one can anchor that research on the health belief model, trying to see how someone's belief, how he perceives something and how it affects his behavior someone who understands the importance or is being affected and the behavior of the person. So the health belief model now as a theory will give you a guideline of what is likely to be or the relationship that's likely existing. So that's why we anchor our research on theories. What are the roles of theory in research? A theory provides an explanation or prediction about the relationship between variables in a study. It helps a researcher understand the underlying mechanism and dynamics at play in their research. For example, a theory of motivation might be used to explain how different factors influence employee performance in an organizational setting. So now another employer is performing in an organization can be explained with the theory of motivation. We have a lot of theory of motivation, theory of S and Y. Those theories can help you understand better why a particular employee is performing poorly or actively. So you see that theories provide the guideline, provide the structured way for understanding certain what phenomena. How to identify the theory to be used 
in your own research work. This can be done, or this can be gotten from the following sources. One, from the discipline, from your own department. For us in public health or in community health or in community medicine, you can always get out the theory that you would need from our department. And so you identify the cluster of theories. You, you, will, you will start by reviewing discipline-based literature related to your research topic. You will have to go and look at other works that are related to your work in our own department. Then from there, you can find out the theory. Then identify the particular theory that within that cluster that suits your study. Okay. Another way of identifying theories that can be used in your research work is by examining theories using similar studies. That is why literature review is important. By the time we have reviewed and see other studies that we are anchored in the other research, other uh, theories, or when you have reviewed other works, you will identify the theories that we are using in that studies. Okay. So that is another way. Another way is to consult with experts. If you are unaware about which theory to use, you will have to consult an expert in the field of public health research and other related what disciplines. How to anchor your research on the theory. One, you will have to state the theory. You have to state the theory preposition or its hypothesis or postulation. You will also have to identify two or three other studies which have used that theory. You're also going to state the strength and limitation of the theory. You're also going to talk about the rationale of testing the theory in your study, despite its limitation. You see, so most times, you're, you are just testing that theory in your work, because that theory critically would explain that your work, but you're trying to test how effective that theory is. Okay, so you have to state the reason of testing the theory in your study. Then you're also going to state the, the name of the research, the name of the person who developed the theory, the year, the postulation, two or three studies which have used the theory, the strength and limitation of the theory, the reason of using that theory in your work, and also how your study will contribute to the body of the knowledge related to that theory. Okay, then you're also gonna use that theory as well to explain the relationship existing between your variable of interest. For instance, if you are working on knowledge and attitude of attitude and practice of exclusive breastfeed among women of childbearing age, you are going to use that particular theory to show us the relationship that's existing between knowledge and attitude, or between knowledge and practice of exclusive breastfeeding, between attitude and practice of exclusive breastfeeding among women of childbearing. So that is the essence. So at the end, in chapter five, when you have gotten your finding, you would always make reference to this what theory which your study was anchored on. So that is how you anchor your research on a theory. But mind you, you will have to so follow the, your school of thought or your school guideline. Most times, the, the, uh, the, the guidelines do not follow as it is, as it appears here. But however, this is the, for general consumption. That is how you can anchor your work on a theory. Then let's look at this. Let's use this precise topic to explain the above um, guidelines. One, we are looking at knowledge and attitude of women of childbearing age towards exclusive breastfeeding in a poor and number states. The theory we identified from that is that will, that will best explain uh, our work or which we are going to text is health belief model. First, you will have to talk about the origin. The health belief model was developed in 1950s by social psychologist Hutchbau. Russell and Kegels. Okay, then what was the hypothesis or proposition? The health belief model 
posit that an individual's health-related behavior is determined by their perception of threat posed by a health problem, the benefit of avoiding the threat and factors influencing the decision to act. So that's what he's trying to explain, that an individual's health-related behavior is determined by the perception of a threat posed by the health problem and the, and the benefit of avoiding the threat and factors influence the decision to, decision to act. So you try to look work on these three. That's the proposition. Okay. When someone perceives that this ill health might likely kill them, they will seek for health care. That's what the model is talking. And also that if the person sees that there is a benefit in avoiding that threat, that if the person can go to hospital, uh, he may not actually become disabled. And again, factors influence decision to act. It could be from the environment, maybe facilities are around, or it could be from uh, maybe uh, significant others, persons who matter in their life. Okay, if they can encourage them, they actually would go for healthcare. And when these factors are not that the person may not actually go for healthcare. So that's example of what this health belief model is trying to uh, explain by his proposition. That is the proposition. Then the studies that have used the health belief, give an example of studies that have um, anchored their work on the on the theory. And here, this one we are given a study by Champion and Skinner. Twitter is used the health belief model to explore breast cancer screening work behavior. It's another one. Then you also talk about the strength and limitation of that health belief model. The strength, the health belief model provides a comprehensive framework for understanding health-related behavior. You see the strength. So it gives you the basis for you to understand certain health-related be behavior. Why the women are using uh, uh, breastfeeding exclusively? Why they are using why they attend going for antenatal care booking or appointment? Why they go for immunization? Why they prefer to use condom? These are health-related be behavior. So the health belief model gives us reasons or gives us a framework for us to understand uh, this health-related behavior. The what are the limitations of this health behavior? You're also going to state the limitation of the, these uh, health belief models. The model may oversimply simplify complex health behaviors, overlook social and environmental factors, and not fully account for individual differences in this family. Yes, it doesn't account for this. That's the limitation. Then you go further to let us know the reason for testing the theory in your study. So yeah, you say despite its limitation, the health belief model offers a structural, a structured approach to understanding individual perception and behaviors related to health. By applying this model to the study on the exclusive breastfeeding, insights can be gained into how women's knowledge and attitude influence their practices, thereby yeah, informing targeted words interventions. Then the next is, how would you contribute to the body of the knowledge that, like, we have, like we stated above? You say, by using the health belief model in the study of on exclusive breastfeeding, the research can contribute to the existing body of knowledge by providing insight into the factors influencing women's decision regarding exclusive breastfeeding. This can help in designing more effective interventions and programs to promote exclusive breastfeeding practice among women of childbearing age in point in Ambra State. You see how your research will now contribute to this uh, theory, provided your work ver uh, uh, verifies the theory to still be effective. You're also going to use that theory to explain the relation to explain the variables, the relationship between in your variables. So in this context of research topic, the health belief model can be used to explain the relationship between women's knowledge and attitude towards the exclusive breastfeeding and their actual practices. By examining how women perceive the benefit of exclusive breastfeeding as a component, remember, perceive, perceiving is a component of health belief model. So the barriers they face and the, their confidence in their ability to breastfeed exclusively. So the model can help show the factors influencing their behavior in this regard. So you see how this theory have helped to explain the relationship existing 
between your variables of interest. Now let's look at this um, topic as an example. Knowledge and attitude of women of childbearing age towards the use of long-acting reversible contraceptive lack in Ibada. This is a study that was based on health belief model. It starts, the health belief model is a psychological model that attempts to explain and predict health behaviors by focusing on the attitude and belief of individuals. When anchoring your research topic on the health belief model, you are essentially looking at how women of childbearing age in Ibada perceive, understand, the use of lack based on their belief, attitude, knowledge as outlined by HBM. Now, these components, these are components of head belief model. They say perceived susceptibility. Explore, you are going to explore how women in Ibada perceive the susceptibility to unintended pregnancy. Because if you recall back, Someone who wants who, who goes into research to look at the, the knowledge and attitude of pregnant women, uh, attitude of, of women of childbearing age towards black. Maybe the reason prompting him to go into research is he have found that high uh, number of or a lot, lot a lot of women are now having unplanned pregnancy or unintended pregnancy because maybe they have a shorter bedding tower because they are not using what contraceptives. They didn't plan for it, so that high rate of unintended pregnancy becomes a problem that wanted them to go into research to look at for what is the cause? Could it be that they are not using family planning? Or what is their knowledge and attitude towards family planning? So now, what the, the head belief model is trying to help you explain that, their perceived susceptibility, okay, to un unintended pregnancy. What is the cause? And then, how, what is the role of lack in preventing this perceived susceptibility? So you are going to assess the understanding of the risk associated with not using effective contraception. So most of these components should be seen in your questionnaire. Then perceived susceptibility. Oh, no, sorry, perceived severity. You are going to investigate how women view the severity of unintended pregnancy and the potential consequences on their health, well-being, and future plans. Then evaluate whether they consider lack as a solution to prevent this what outcome. So these are components of health belief model. It's, it's giving you a guide. They want them, them perceived benefit. We are going to examine the perceived benefit of using lack among women in Ibada. What, what do, they, do we really actually think that is a benefit from in using lack? So in your questionnaire, these components should reflect to be able to help you understand and see the relationship existing between your variables of interest. Okay, this could include factors such as effectiveness, is it as effective, is it convenience, long term protection, and potential health benefit associated with lack use. Then, passive barrier is there a barrier? that these women are facing in assessing and using lack in a battle. You should be able to identify mm -hmm. three of when you go into research, into um, data collection. The other component of health belief is clue to action. We're going to explore the factors that prompt women to consider using lack. This could be in form of recommendations, social influence, educational campaigns, personal experiences. That is where I talk about strategy, maybe your question in one of your research objectives, because the theory you are using to anchor your research will have the connection with your research objectives. Okay, yes, that's why I say your research objective informs the theory you are going to use, informs the uh, design you are going to use, and informs the questionnaire you are developing. They must align and must also reflect with research questions and the statement of the problem and the background. That will say that why we say they are all what connected. Okay, so you are going to explore in your your questionnaire strategies to improve its use or to improve their knowledge so that it can be using or their attitude 
it has a close to action that can prompt these women to start using land. Then effect self-efficacy. You are going to assess the confidence and ability of women in Ibada to successfully initiate and continue using lack. Okay, so that is how you can anchor your research on how to believe model. So when anchoring your research work on a theory, you are actually doing what? Testing that theory. You're going to explore the components of that theory so that that theory will help show you the relationship existing between knowledge and use, attitude and use. So by the time you apply this theory and go into field and you collect, you find out that maybe at the end of it all, your, the data you have found, you collected, proves that they have poor knowledge and poor utilization. That poor knowledge and poor utilization. So which, also, which is in line with what health belief model actually have proposed. So therefore, now you now explore other components like that of uh, the clues to action to see if they, there will be improvement in the utilization of um, the lack, okay? So now another example is factors influencing utilization of PSC facilities in the heat and behavior. So this is how you are going to write it. In the, in the, in here we, we just explained how you are going to acquire your research on a particular theory. We have explained uh, how you can identify the theory you are going to use in research. We have explained the importance. Then we have explained how you are going to anchor your research on a theory. Now, we are going to look at how you are going to report it in your research report. Says this, this, study and adopts the, this study adopts the health belief model as a theoretical framework to understand, that's for this topic now, factors influencing the utilization of PAC facilities in the ETM theory. The study adopts the health belief model as a theoretical framework to understand the various factors that may affect indiv individuals' decision to seek healthcare services at primary healthcare facilities in the ETM theory. By employing this model, the research aims to provide a valuable insight into, into the determinants of health-seeking behaviors and contribute to the development of effective strategy to improve primary healthcare utilization in this community. In one word, the health belief model is a psychological model that seeks to explain and predict health-related behaviors by considering individuals' belief and perception. Health belief model developed in 1950s by social psychologists Aaron Rosaket and Godfrey Hartburn. The model is based on the premise that individuals' health-related behavior are influenced by their beliefs about the likelihood of developing a health problem and their perceived benefits and barriers associated with taking action to prevent or treat the problem. The health belief model consists of several key components. Passive susceptibility. This refers to an individual's belief about their likelihood of developing a health problem. People are more likely to take actions if they perceive themselves to be at risk. Passive severity. This component relates to an individual's belief about the seriousness and impact of a health problem. If an individual perceives a health problem to be severe, they are more likely to take action to prevent or treat it. Passive benefit. This refers to an individual's belief about the effectiveness of a recommended health action in reducing the risk of severity of a health problem. If individuals believe that a particular action will bring them benefits, they are more likely to engage in that behavior. Perceived barrier. This component considers that individuals' perception of the obstacle or barriers that may prevent them from taking action. These barriers can be practical, such as cost, time, accessibility, or it can be psychological, such as fear or lack of knowledge. The higher the perceived barrier, the less likely individuals are to engage in the recommended word, behavior. Clues to actions. This component represents a standard stimulus or events that prompt individuals to take action. 
Clues to action can include personal experience in their campaigns, advice from healthcare providers or social influence. Self-efficacy. Self-efficacy refers to individuals believe in their ability to successfully perform a recommended towards behavior. According to the HBM, individuals, individuals wear these components when making decisions about their health-related behavior. If they perceive benefits, if they perceive benefits outweighs the perceived barrier. And if individuals perceive themselves to be susceptible to a health problem and consider it to be severe, they are more likely to engage in recommended towards behavior. However, it is important to know that HBM well, has some limitation. It assumes that individuals are rational decision makers and that their behaviors are solely driven by their belief and perception. In reality, health behaviors are influenced by a wide range of factors, including social, cultural, and environmental factors. Despite this limitation, the health belief model remains a valuable framework for understanding and predicting health-related behaviors. It provides a useful starting point for understanding the factors affecting utilization of primary healthcare facilities in Egyptian. So this is a perfect example of a, a reset that is anchored on the theory, the theory health belief model. So that is all about theories that can be used in your research work. Okay, use, use a theory to anchor your work, and um, which means that you are trying to test that theory. You're trying to test that theory. And upon the basis of that model or theory, explanations existing between your variables of interest would be explained based on the theory's provision. So that's the essence that in every such topic in chapter two, after in literature review section, you are going to use a particular theory to anchor your work. That in chapter five, when you are discussing your results, you're also going to make reference to this theory which you anchored your research work. Um, thank you.